Shoulder Examination for Medical Students by Mr Duncan Tennant. Before you start, remember to wash your hands, introduce yourself, obtain a consent from the patient and ask about any pain. The basic principles of all orthopaedic examination is look, feel, move, followed by any special tests. Fully expose the appropriate area and inspect for asymmetry, deformity, scars, muscle bulk or any wasting, swelling and any evidence of erythema. Palpate for any obvious deformity, any tenderness, swelling or differences in temperature. Both the active and the passive range of motion needs to be assessed. If there is any discrepancy between the two, you need to determine whether this is due to weakness or pain, and if there is any pain, you need to identify both the nature of the pain and the location. Special tests are joint specific and are based on the presumptive diagnosis obtained from both your history and your examination. Resist the temptation to apply every test you know to every case as this really will not help in confirming any diagnosis. With the patient fully exposed to the waist and having obtained consent, inspect carefully from the sternoclavicular joint, across the acromioclavicular joint, around the acromion and around the spine for any obvious asymmetry, wasting or deformity. Palpation starts at the sternoclavicular joint and then walk your fingers along the clavicle identifying the acromioclavicular joint, the greater tuberosity in the spine of the scapula, then work down the long head of biceps located anteriorly. Position yourself so that you can see the patient's face as well as their movements and so that you can demonstrate the movements that you wish them to do. Ask them to demonstrate the movement with both arms as this stops the body twisting and enables you to have a normal comparison. With each movement of flexion, abduction, external rotation and internal rotation, ask them to do the full active movement and then take the arm through the full passive range if tolerated. External rotation is best assessed standing behind the patient, turn the good arm out as far as it will go and then ask them to turn the affected arm out as far as they can manage. Internal rotation is assessed by asking them to reach up the back as far as they can go and recording the vertebral level that the thumb reaches. Measure this against the other side to get an assessment of normal. Once the range of motion has been determined, a basic assessment of rotator cuff strength should be undertaken. The posterior cuff, made up of infraspinatus and teres minor, is best assessed with resisted external rotation. Supraspinatus is best assessed with the Job's test, so the arm is brought into 90 degrees of abduction in the scapular plane. The thumb is turned down and the downward force of the examiner is resisted. The subscapularis muscle is best assessed with either the belly press test in which the palm of the hand is pressed into the stomach whilst the elbow is kept forward or by using Gerber's lift-off test in which the hand is brought round behind the back just under the scapula and then the patient attempts to lift the hand away from the back whilst the examiner presses in. There are a multitude of special tests described for the shoulder. You really only need to be aware of the Job's test for impingement and the anterior apprehension test for instability. Job's test has been described previously with resisted downward pressure on the abducted arm. If there is positive impingement, this will reproduce the patient's pain over the lateral aspect of the arm. To assess a patient for instability, first perform an AP glide in which you fix the acromion with one hand and slide the humeral head with the other, then perform a sulcus test where you fix the acromion and pull down on the arm trying to reproduce a dip just under the acromion. The apprehension test is performed by asking the patient to abduct to 90 degrees and point the hand straight up at the ceiling. With the back hand, the humeral head is pushed forward with the thumb and then the arm is twisted in a cocking motion. If the apprehension test is positive, 
This will reproduce the patient's symptoms and they'll have a feeling of instability. When you have completed your examination, remember to thank the patient and to ask to examine both the joint above and the joint below. Ask to check the neurovascular status and consider any imaging that you might wish to request. And finally, remember to wash your hands before you leave.